I'm from Bristol. Um, we are with the wonderfully named Abolish Empty Office Buildings House People Limited. It was already named that when I got involved. I would never have named something like that. It's a real mouthful. Uh, generally abbreviated to AEOB, which I were only rivaled by AECB, who was just an awkward name as us. Um, so we looked at the problem of empty office buildings. Um, what is the problem of empty office buildings? We've got a lot of them, particularly um, recession, 2010. By that point, so many um, small businesses had not got to a point where either they'd folded, they'd conglomerated, they couldn't keep particularly city center office space. Um, and in order to save on costs, big companies were moving to out of town spaces, uh, particularly sort of uh, uh, suburban uh, park type areas. Um, and they were getting support from councils to do that, to move to new places, leaving lots and lots of empty office space. Um, we've all walked around places where we live and we see office to let signs everywhere. You can't move for them. Um, and as we got out of sort of some sen sense of recession and companies were coming in, they weren't moving into these properties. They were moving into new energy efficient more uh, eff effective spaces that were being purpose built for them. So what's happening to all these spaces in our city centers and suburban areas which are just sitting there? 2014, um, when we were working at the beginning of this project, we had 2.2 million square feet of empty office space just in central Bristol. Um, so that's the kind of scale that we were, we were looking at um, as a problem. Um, another problem we have in Bristol um, and in a lot of cities where there's a, an older centre to the city is that places which were houses have been turned into offices because they were attractive, particularly 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, prestigious companies wanted to have their offices in the city centre in these lovely old Georgian terraces. So this particular street, it's an entire terrace street which one side of it is empty and there's office space in central Bristol. Um, or built in the 1820s, was damaged by some bombing um, and the fronts were preserved and the backs were rebuilt. Um, in the 1960s, um, just to the end of this, if I was to sort of turn 90 degrees from where that photo was taken, you can see the back of a big um, block which was built by the council to house the Avon area uh, council offices, um, which they then moved out of and it got turned into apartments. But that meant this street, which had historically been joined to the city centre, is now a tucked away back corner. Um, and nobody wants to have their business there because how would you ever get anybody to it? Um, so from 2000, it did part of it, the, the little bit here that you can see um, was called The Hub. It was a homeless support uh, centre. Um, and But from 2010 until now, it's been vacant offices to let. It's currently got an application to convert to student accommodation. I don't necessarily have a problem with students having somewhere to live, but it does seem to be the only kind of city centre residential development that we're getting at the moment. So AEOB responded to that uh, coming out of something that was called the uh, Reconciliation Laboratory Project, which was run by one of the city centre churches in Bristol. Um, it began as a campaign group. Uh, in 2013, it formed as a, a standard co-op and launched a share offer. And then in 2014, we converted to this new structure, the Community Benefit Society, with charitable tax status, because it allows us to have an asset lock on the properties that we buy and develop. At that point, we were looking at what model should we have? Should we uh, become some kind of registered provider? And we'd all, we kind of foresee, foresaw at that point that if we went down that route, then we'd be stepping into the right, right to buy issues, potentially. So we're really, really glad now that we took that opportunity because it allows us to manage the properties going forward for the benefit of the people that we want to house. Um, our priorities were very much looking at people who either housing benefit or um, low income potentially dependent on housing benefit top up and the lower end of working uh, people who are stuck in these unstable uh, rental uh, structures that people have already spoken about. So by the end of 2014, or mid-2014, we'd raised uh, about 230,000 in community shares, and we're thinking, what can we do with that? It's gonna take us a lot more to get up to a, the kind of big office places we've been looking at. 
And we found this space, which um, was an industrial um, workspace downstairs and upstairs, an office space, had been used by a whole sequence of different um, businesses over the years. It's a 100-year-old building. Um, and it was no longer functioning for the community it's in. It's in the middle of housing. The neighbors were quite sick of um, the uncertainty of having more and more unknown businesses coming in uh, and causing problems. So we managed to get this. And with a loan from, uh, well, a mortgage from Triodos secured on the property to start developing it. So I'll run you through some of these little bits. So started stripping it out. There's the office disappearing, some of our community workforce. Um, we also found that uh, in the history of the building, um, some of its uh, old packing cases had been turned into the ceiling. So we were able to, through that, to track back the history of the building. So we've got a whole file on the history of the building that we can share with people. And it's something we feel really important is that when you redevelop a building um, that belongs in its community, rather than knocking it down and starting again, you're continuing the development of the community. It's a participation process. You can engage with the community, engage with, for example, our local history society. They've been to have a look around. We've talked to them about the history of the building. And um, we're continuing to develop the area rather than coming in and taking over and doing to it. We're developing with it. Um, we've done a lot of sort of reclamation and recycling, um, floorboards, stone, brick that's come out of the building. And there it is, all stripped out and ready to go. Um, and one of the things that we did, you can't really see here with the light on the screen, the upper one there is uh, what it looked like seen from the garden originally. Um, we've built an extension there now. Um, but in, when we altered, made the alterations for the upstairs and downstairs corridor, we remade it with the bricks that we'd taken out from other parts of the building. So you can see the evolution of the building. We've filled in window spaces with bricks taken from elsewhere in the building. So you can kind of walk through the building's history as you're living in it. We added on an extension, uh, screw pile foundations, uh, timber frame uh, construction, lots and lots of insulation, um, trying to make it a efficient building to live in. Uh, really trying to look at kind of whole house affordability. Uh, so these are compact flats for people in housing need and we want to keep the bills down as low as possible. Part of doing that in a a building like this, where you are all opening onto the same corridor, you're inside one superstructure, is we can also have community billing. So one bill incoming, rather than everyone paying their own standing charge for bills. And to facilitate that working, we're helping them set up a tenant management co-op. So the owners of the building will be this community benefit society, and the residents will be a tenant management co-op, can manage their own bills, um, and be able to have a lot of psychological ownership of their space. They'll have, um, after their sort of either six months or a year, depending on how, um, how quickly things stabilize for them moving from wherever, um, they'll move on to an assured tenancy. So they will then have a secure rented house. They can move out in their own flexibility, but the only rights that we would have to remove them is if there's um, a, a problem that's breaching their tenancy. So this is the architect's um, impression of what it would look like um, that they did early on. And here it is at the moment, more or less. That's a few weeks ago, um, last sort of days of summer. Uh, we've got external wall insulation, um, as well as insulation inside the roof. Um, there's a whole bank of solar panels. And we're in the process now of tidying things up and finishing off services. Um, we should be finished by the end of November. But this is just mark one. It's very much proof of concept. This was our first attempt. Um, and to do that, we had to raise, pretty much raise the capital to buy the property at commercial rates and then secure a, a mortgage to do the development. And we hope that having shown that we can do it and the mortgage will be repaid from, from rents alone, um, that we can show that there is a, this is a way to re-energize some of the buildings which are not serving their community as it is at the moment, industrial, commercial, um, and potentially in, uh, and office buildings in various different parts of the country. So scaling it up, that's where we're looking at next. So in Bristol, um, so 2010 to 2014, Bristol Council housing waiting list increased by 50%. So it went from 10,420 on the list to 14,513. And that 14,000 figure is within a couple of hundred of the number of council houses that they have sold off over the last 20 years. 
Funny that, isn't it? Um, and there's many, many more vulnerable households that are not on the list because they don't bother putting themselves on there because they know they'd be on it for life. And those are the people that we've um, mostly been working with. We've um, got our residents selected now. We have three single parents um, three sing and three single people. So it's six flats, three two bed, three one bed, uh, two one bed and a studio. And also older single people who have effectively been living in shared accommodation well into their 40s because that's the only thing they can get access to. Um, and we're, one of the great things about the Community Benefit Society model and not having to be a registered provider is that we are not compelled to take people from the housing list, which means that we can hold our hands up and expose the fact that the people who are not eligible to be on that list and not eligible for support can end up in worse situations than the people who society or the organisations recognise as being the most in need. And what else can we do? Um, all around the country, there's a lot of disused office, commercial, industrial buildings. They're not serving their original purpose. They're not serving their communities. What can we do with them? Can residential conversions in the city serve the community better? Do we have to convert them into student accommodation? That seems to be the only development that's happening in the centre of Bristol. Or um, luxury flats. We don't need any more luxury flats. Um, we need people to be able to live near where they work. If all these uh, student uh, redevelopments could be a mixture and have compact, affordable living for professionals who are living in the city centre who are working on low incomes. And can communities redevelop their own disused spaces um, rather than having people come in from outside and, and doing it to them? Can they have a voice? Can they be involved? Can they upskill as individuals? Um, we've got some people working uh, with us who've been also working with the Community Land Trust developing their own skills and that's something they can take forward and we want to support that as a, a community development not just a, a building itself yeah and generally can we rehabilitate empty buildings in the same way that we um, previous speakers have spoken about rehabilitating <coughs> houses using those technologies that are available to make them into sustainable uh, buildings that we can use well, that's all folks thanks very much <laughs>